Donald Trump is attacking Clinton over the email scandal, calling her actions, quote, willful, deliberate, and criminal, and maintaining that, in his assessment, this is bigger than Watergate. Now, Trump is holding a rally in Las Vegas this morning, and that's where we find our David Wright. David, good morning to you. Good morning, Paula. Three guesses what theme he'll be hitting hardest at that rally. Whether he intended to or not, the FBI director has thrown Trump a lifeline, and Trump has seized it. This is the biggest political scandal since Watergate. And it's everybody's deepest hope that justice, at last, will be beautifully delivered. This surprise encore of Hillary Clinton's email scandal came not a moment too soon. Hillary has nobody but herself to blame for her mounting legal difficulties. This time, the scandal includes the sexting investigation into disgraced former Congressman Anthony Weiner. Haven't we had enough drama with the Clintons? Trump sure hasn't. Now there's new vigor to his claims of Clinton cronyism and backroom deals. The Department of Justice is fighting with the FBI. That's because the Department of Justice is trying their hardest to protect the criminal activity of Hillary Clinton. Suddenly, FBI Director Comey is no longer part of the rigged system Trump rails against. He also gets to say, I told you so about Wiener. We don't want perverts elected in New York City. No perverts. Pointing to past tweets, calling him a sicko and a calamity. It's called instinct, Father. I had no idea it was going to be that accurate. Boy, that was right on the nose. The Anthony Weiner component has brought this race right into the gutter. Uh, at Trump's rallies, the chance of lock her up now have a new intensity. Dan and Paula, remember when the presidential contest was about the 3 a.m. phone call at the White House? Now it's about 3 a.m. messages of a very different sort. Yeah, I think you could argue this, this race has been in the gutter for a while. Uh, <laughs> David, thank you very much for your reporting from Vegas this morning. As mm -hmm. promised, let's bring in ABC News chief anchor George Stephanopoulos, who's going to be hosting this week later this morning. Good morning, morning sir. Morning. So if you combine this news out of the FBI with the dramatically tightened ABC News tracking poll, are we now looking at a situation where Donald Trump, who was written off by some people, could come back and win this election? Can't rule it out. There's no question about it. Look, before, on Thursday night, before this news broke, Hillary Clinton was on offense. She was on track to victory, probably more than 300 electoral votes, but everything stopped dead in its tracks when this news came out on, on Friday. Our latest poll shows that about 30 percent of the people say that this makes them less likely to vote for Hillary Clinton. Now, most of those were for Donald Trump anyway, but the question is, will this energize his supporters even more, depress her supporters? We don't know the full answer to that yet. We need to learn a lot more about what exactly Comey is looking at, whether her partisans come back and say, wait a second, this doesn't seem fair, and they end up getting energized, but it does make it possible right now, no question about it. Speaking of her partisan supporters and members of Congress really feel their concerns that this could unfairly influence the election. They're pushing Comey to be more transparent and release uh, some, some of this information. Do you expect him to acquiesce? It's hard to know what's going through James Comey's mind right now. Remember when he came out in July? He broke tradition back in July when he gave that press conference rather than simply closing the investigation. He said he was doing it because there was such intense public interest hmm. in this case. You would think that same standard would drive him to release more details. And of course, you now have that request from members of Congress, from key senators right now, to have them out by tomorrow. But he has shown over the weekend, it appears he defied uh, his, his colleagues at the Justice Department who said they believed he should not come out with that letter. He did it anyway. Only he knows what he's going to do. But doesn't doesn't he have a case here? I mean, he's getting pounded by the Democrats for, for going ahead and releasing this letter so close to the election. But if we had found out after the election that he had learned about this new trove of emails mm -hmm. and didn't say anything until after the election, he'd be pounded for that. Right. No question about it. He was in a tough spot, in part because he had come out publicly uh, in the past. I think one of the questions we need to get an answer to, though, did he even know what was in the emails? When he wrote the letter, well, I, I think he's saying he doesn't some indication know. that he yeah, well, yeah. certainly doesn't know the full scope of yeah. it, mm -hmm. but it m might have had no idea at all. So that's what's cr creating the criticism for him as well. But no question about it, he was in a very, very tough spot. Probably going to get criticized no matter what he did. We'll see what he does in the coming days.
it's uh, almost certain to affect the election in some way. Mm -hmm. George, thank you very thank you, much. George. And a reminder that George has a big show coming up. He's going to go one on one with the Democratic vice presidential nominee, Tim Kaine. That's later this morning on This Week. And stay with ABC News for complete coverage on Election Day itself, led by George. And it's now just nine days away. Next Tuesday. Thanks very nice. much, Dan.